If you haven't done so yet, pause the video and try to solve the question before listening on. Our first step is to draw a free body diagram showing the forces acting on this bar. Now perhaps the most obvious force would be the force of gravity acting at the center of the bar and pointing straight down. The question notes that the weight of the bar is 200 newtons, so we can actually label this force of gravity as being 200 newtons. Looking back at the picture, we have this block that's resting on the bar, and so the weight of that block will be pressing down on the bar, and that will serve as a second force that's acting downward on the bar. And the question notes that the block's weight is 300 newtons, so we can label that force as well. We also know that there is a tension force that's pulling up on the bar at the point labeled B. So we can take a third force and draw it in this fashion. And then we'll just for now label it 500 newtons because the question told us that the maximum tension in the wire will be 500. So we can label that as 500. In addition, we were told that the angle between the wire and the bar was 30 degrees. So we can go ahead and label that angle as 30 degrees. And it turns out that there are two more forces acting on the bar, and they're both acting over here at the hinge where the bar sort of connects to the wall. Now the bar is pressing up against the wall, and in response, the wall will press back against the bar. That would be a Newton's third law reaction force. So we can draw that force pointing to the right. Also, the bar is trying, if you will, to slip down the surface of the wall, and in response, the hinge will push up on the bar in order to prevent it from slipping down the wall. So there will be a final force here acting at the hinge. And for these forces, we could perhaps call them V for a vertical force and then H for a horizontal force. We just want to label a couple of distances now to help us with the next part of the problem. The bar itself was three meters long, so we know from here all the way over to here can be labeled as three meters. The 200 Newton gravitational force is acting at the center of the bar, so we know that from the left end to that force would be half of the distance of the bar, which would be 1.5 meters. And then the final distance that we can label would be from the far left end of the bar over to where the box was pressing down. Now that distance we do not know, so we're not going to be able to apply a numerical value to it. We're just going to call it x. And in fact, that distance x is going to be what we're looking for in part A of the question. So we'll try to squeeze the label x right here. Now that we have the free body diagram properly labeled, our next step is to examine the torques that are acting on the bar. And to do that, we have to understand that torque is equal to a force multiplied by a distance, and then multiplied by the sine of an angle. And the distance will be from the force to what is known as a pivot point. Now, in order to use this equation effectively, we need to select a pivot point. You can technically place your pivot point anywhere along the length of the bar, but it's most advantageous to place the pivot at the point through which the greatest number of unknown forces passes. So let's say that again. We want to place the pivot at the point through which the greatest number of unknown forces pass. We can see at the far left end of the board we have two unknown forces. We have H and then V, neither of which we know. So it is most, advan most advantageous to place the pivot point at this end of the rod or the bar. So this will be our pivot. We can fill in a little circle here just to remind ourselves of where it is. Theta will be the angle between the force and the bar. So for example, with the 500 Newton tension force, we can see clearly the angle is 30 degrees. With the downward acting forces, the angle would be 90 degrees because they act perpendicular to the rod. Also, we need to note that when a force produces a clockwise torque, it is considered to be negative. And then when a force produces a counterclockwise torque, it is considered to be positive. Let's start applying the torque equation to each of the forces. So for example, with the 300 Newton force, we would fill in that force multiplied by the distance to the pivot, which would be labeled x, multiplied by the sine of the angle between that force and the bar, 
and that will be 90 degrees as noted. Notice too that the 300 Newton force is tending to cause the bar to rotate in a clockwise fashion, sort of like this way. And as we noted, that will produce a negative torque. So we can stick a negative sign right here. The 200 Newton force also is producing a clockwise torque. So it's negative. We take its force, we multiply by the distance to the pivot, and then the sign of 90. For the tension, that's tending to cause the bar to rotate in a counterclockwise fashion, so that will be positive torque. And we take that force, we multiply by the distance to the pivot, and then the sine of 30 degrees. Now, for the unknown forces, you'll notice we've left them out of the torque equation, and that's because any force that's passing through the pivot produces zero torque. And so that was the whole point of putting the pivot here, is that we don't have to concern ourselves with the torque produced by H or V which is great because we don't even know the value of those forces. So we can exclude them from the torque equation. And once we've put all of the relevant torques in, we can set this equal to zero because the bar is in equilibrium. Now this is a nice equation because everything in it is known except for x. So why don't we go ahead and add the 300x sine 90 over to the right. And then if we want, we can cross off the sine of 90s since those are one. And then we can divide both sides by 300. And that way we can isolate x. And when we solve for x, we'll have to come over here, x turns out to be exactly 1.50 meters. So this would be the correct answer to part a. So we now know that that distance is 1.5. We can go back to the diagram and label it as such. And actually what's interesting is that 1.5 meters would place the box directly in the center of the bar. So in fact the box isn't really placed over here. We should imagine it to be acting more so right in the middle of the bar. Now on to part B, which asks for the horizontal force that's acting at the hinge. That would be the force that we've labeled H. We can see that that force is acting in the X direction. And there's another force that's acting in the X direction. If you look at the tension, you could see that that tension could be broken up into an X and a Y component. The X component of the tension would be pointing to the left. And then the Y component would be pointing straight up. We could hopefully see that the X component, because it's adjacent to the 30 degree angle, is going to be 500 times the cosine of 30. And then the Y component, because it's opposite to the 30 degree angle, would be 500 sine of 30. Once we have the components, we can actually take out the 500 Newton force because our focus in general will be on the components of forces, not so much the resultant force itself. So let's take this three, 500 Newtons out of here. So focusing on the forces that are acting in the x direction, which would be h and 500 cos 30, because the bar is in equilibrium, we know that h must be equal in magnitude to the 500 cos 30. And in fact, this will allow us to solve for h rather easily. And it turns out to be 433 newtons. So that's the correct answer to part b of the question. Part C is asking for the vertical component of the force acting at the hinge. So we're going to be looking for V. That force points in the Y direction, as does the 300 Newtons, the 200 Newtons, and the vertical component of tension. Now, again, since the bar is in equilibrium, any forces that are pointing upward, which would be V as well as the vertical component of tension, must be equal in magnitude to all the forces pointing downward. And we can see that the two forces pointing downward add up to 500 newtons. So if we simply subtract 500 sine 30 over to the right hand side, we're going to be able to get the value of V. And when we do that, we get 250 newtons. So this is the correct answer to part C. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen and I'll do my best to respond to it on YouTube.